Hey everyone, it's Jill Foster here for Penny Black, bringing you a positively Penny Black video, trying to do our part to bring you moments of peace, distraction, and crafty fun during these uncertain times we are currently finding ourselves in. And today I'm going to be doing some stamping and some painting using our Cling Stamp Unforgettable. I've used this stamp to make several different cards and it is such a joy to stamp and to color no matter what medium you prefer. Now my here's a look at the card that we will be creating today and this card was totally inspired by the very talented Mila and here's a look at her inspiration card and I'm going to put a link down to her blog post where she has the details of how she created her card but I just found this to be so light and fresh and airy and uncomplicated and it just let the flowers um, just show in the beauty that they are and by using her inspiration I didn't have to do any tough thinking at all I could just relax and use her color inspiration for the painting and coloring on mine so to begin this is a five by seven inch card so it's a nice large card and I've stamped the image down in the bottom right hand corner and the upper left hand corner and I've stamped onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper this is a cold press paper and I am I stamped it using Toffee Crunch Memento ink and I really like using this particular ink with my Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors. It's kind of a cheater way for me to get the look of a no line watercolor because the areas that are stamped really tend to take on the colors of the reinker that I'm painting with and but I don't have to worry about what I have stamped blending or bleeding or if I don't do great shading, you can still see the outlines there. It's not completely up to me to delineate between each petal and all of the details with my painting and my color choices. So here I am using the Picked Raspberry Distress Ink Reinker. I put that on my palette off to the side. And wherever I want that to be the darkest, I that's the first place that I take my paintbrush just as you can see I'm doing right there sort of lay down that darker bit of ink rinse off my paintbrush pat it dry and then um, or it's semi dry there's still some water on it and then use that water that remains on the paintbrush to sort of blend that color out if I want an area of really light color I just basically use that wet paintbrush after I've blended an area out to apply that light color now these flowers may look really complicated or like there's a lot of detail or that they would take forever to color but I find I just put some lines of light and dark going around in that circular motion blend it out with water and if you leave just a little bit of white on the tips of those as much as you can or a real light area that will definitely give this dimension and the look of sort of a loosely painted um, rose so I'm just continuing to do that um, around my image and just really enjoying how relaxing it is to paint. For me, painting is just something, when I do that, I'm not thinking about the news or anything else, just the beauty of these flowers. Now here I'm going in, I finished all of the pink flowers using Mila's card as an inspiration of where to put the pink. And here I'm going in with the peeled paint distress ink to paint the leaves. You'll notice I'm kind of skipping uh, between leaves that are not adjacent to each other or touching each other. That way when I go in to add the darker color or other colors, they don't start blending and bleeding into one another. Now I do have all of the exact colors, the supplies, the paper, the stamps, the ink, um, my paintbrushes, everything listed at the very end of the video up on screen. So if you hit pause at that time, you can check that out in more detail. I will also link all of the stamps uh, that I'm using today down in the YouTube description box below if you would like to check those out in the Penny Black online store. You can see here, again, I'm just doing um, some darker color and then going back and blending that in with the just water on my paintbrush. And I invite you, if you are looking for some distraction, for me, crafting kind of keeps me grounded, keeps my mind off other things. Uh, but sometimes when I'm a little bit stressed, it's hard for me 
to find the right inspiration or hard for me to come up with my own inspiration. So you can see here that I've used Mila's as inspiration and I invite you um, to do that. If you're having difficulty finding inspiration, um, go ahead and use someone else's card as inspiration. Just be sure that you credit them as your inspiration. Now my watercolor painting is done and I'm using Arteza gouache paints just onto a cheap palette that I had picked up at Walmart and I am going to use these to add some dark areas and some light areas right on top of the watercolor. Now you certainly could skip this step but I really like the texture that it adds and gives it just a little bit more of a painterly look. Sometimes you pick up some of those brush strokes. It also can help um, because these are pretty opaque paints. You can go over what you've already painted. Now a little bit of it will start to reblend when you add the wetness of the paint to the watercolors, but they kind of help you fix up any areas. If you didn't leave enough white or you want to darken up some of your shadows, I find it's really fun and easy to do that with these gouache paints. I also think for floral images, they give that, just a touch of them here and there, give that almost sort of velvety texture that you get on a flower petal and I just like that softness that they add to the floral stamping. So here you can see and I'm just going in with a very light touch just to a few areas um, with this uh, I believe it's ice blue but again all the colors will be listed on screen at the very end of the video and you can see where that just sort of gives a soft look to those flower petals. Now gouache paints for me, the best way I can think of to describe them is sort of like an acrylic paint that you can add water to. So you can decide how thick and opaque you want them to be um, just by adding more or less water to the paint when you squeeze it out of the tube. Now you can also re-wet these, so that's why I like to use a palette because I can go back to other colors I've used before and just put, um, re-wet it with my paintbrush and apply that onto my image. So. Um, you can, these are lasting me forever and I just love them. You can see here on this flower, you've got that boldness of that picked raspberry distress ink reinker that I originally painted. But here now I'm going in with just a little bit softer, a little bit more of a red toned pink on top of that. And I just think it makes it look so soft. Just, I guess that's the best word that I can think of to describe that. And for me, I love to play with color and layers, so this is fun. Um, fun for me just to fiddle around. Now you can see here with the green, it kind of changes, mixes a little bit because I used a lot of water here on this leaf with the gouache paints. It sort of mixes and blends with the watercolor, the inks that are down below. So um, it just gives you, again, and I'll give you some close-up pictures at the end, a different look to your painting. Or if you're in a rut and you just feel like you want to try something new, uh, this is something I definitely recommend is try some layering on top of your watercolors. You could do it like I'm doing here with the gouache paints. You could paint with your watercolors and then add colored pencil on top or you could just leave it um, very loose and soft and subtle with your watercoloring. So I'm just going to continue here adding touches of that green to the leaves. I'm not doing every single leaf, um, just the ones where I want to have uh, you know, a good impact, mostly the larger leaves, but touches here and there on the other so they do tie together. Once I was done doing all of that painting, I am using an ink blending tool and a foam pad along with uh, Wendy Vecchi Make Art Blendable Dye inks in the colors of Fern Green and Acorn. Just starting off the edge and working my way on in a circular motion to add some light inking to the background. This is something that I noticed on my inspiration card by Mila and I just loved how that soft inking just was enough to finish off the card and give it just a peaceful feeling to me. And for the small stems on my flowers, I just use a Pit Artist pen. That's easier for me than trying to use a really small paintbrush and steady my hand. Now my sentiment comes from our transparent set Million Thanks. I wanted to do a multicolor sentiment just like the inspiration card by Mila. And this type of set is so easy to do that with because you have some larger sentiments and then some smaller supporting sentiments that you can use with it. So I'm inking this up with Picked Raspberry Distress ink. So it's a nice match to 
the flowers that I've painted. I am stamping this in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool, which allows me to get multiple impressions onto the textured watercolor cardstock. Just gives a better impression. Here I am uh, behind my head lining up that supporting sentiment underneath from that same Million Thanks set. And I will ink that using Ranger Archival ink in the color of Jet Black. So you can see how easy it is with no masking or anything involved to get a pink and black sentiment. And I like the way this sort of fits in between those two clusters of flowers. So here's a look at that finished card. Very simple, one layer, uh, five by seven, large size, but you could also do this on a standard size um, card as well, a four and a quarter by five and a half inch. I've used this stamp with that size as well. And the mixture of the watercolor and the gouache painting, just to give some softness and extra dimension to this image. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our video, subscribe to our channel. And uh, we'll, we are really inviting you to fill your feed and trying to um, put some positivity out there right now. So if you would like to, be sure to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and our blog posts, which are loaded with beauty, flowers, critters, and we're trying to put all things happy out there for you. Um, and I've linked to all of these down in the description box below. And if you stay tuned, as promised, you will find the supply list for creating this card. Thanks for watching.